Hi, superstars. This is Mrs. Logan. Are you ready for our adventure today? Here are your clues. Today, I'm going to take you with me on a swim out to the middle of La Jolla Cove. So, the ocean water has gotten cooler, so I need to wear my wetsuit today. And for any of you who have tried putting a wetsuit on, it's not the most comfortable. Once I get my gear on, we are ready to head out. Looking pretty serious, right? As soon as I splash in, I'm excited to see some leopard sharks swimming in the area. Leopard sharks are a species of the hound shark, and they are very gentle and don't harm people. They usually are between four and five feet long. They have a real slender body, and the coloring of their um, skin gives them a really good camouflage. Can you see that? They blend in with the light filtrating through the water. Now, these leopard sharks like to eat clams and spoonworms and crabs. And they'll eat some shrimp or some bony fish and fish eggs. spending about five minutes with the leper sharks, we head out to our first stop, a buoy about a half a mile from shore. So if you've ever been in the ocean, you know that it tastes really salty. Scientists believe that runoff from land and then also openings in the sea floor are the reason that oceans are so salty. Salt is made up of two elements on the periodic table. It's made up of sodium, and chloride. So the chemical formula for salt is NaCl. A chemical compound is a combination of two or more elements that are bonded together to take on new physical and chemical properties. You may be familiar with this periodic table, but if you're not, don't worry. You'll learn more about it in middle school and high school. You've probably heard someone refer to water as H2O. Well, the H stands for hydrogen, and there's two of them in water. And the O stands for oxygen. You can see our oxygen is red, and our two hydrogen are white. So let's add some salt to this water. So you can see a bunch of water molecules here, and then you see some blue sodium and some green chloride, salt, that's taking up space in the water. Well, that's what's happening in the ocean. The salt is taking up space in the water and it's making it heavier. Salt water is more dense than fresh water, which means it's easier for us to float in ocean water than in fresh lake water. This got me curious. If I float easier in salt water than in fresh water, would other things react the same? 
I decided I had to go home and do some experimenting on my own. As we turned back to the shore, our adventure continued. We waved goodbyes to some kayakers. We did some body surfing. And as we walked up to the shore, my friend Kirk accidentally stepped on a stingray. Do you remember the one that we saw earlier in the video? Well, it was super painful. We had to go to the lifeguard station for them to treat him. Here we are down at La Jolla Shores and we're at the lifeguard station. Hi there. Hi. So how do you treat a, sh um, a stingray? Um, sting, right? Mm -hmm. It's a barb from the stingray that actually penetrates into someone's foot or leg? Yeah, so normally people will step on the round part of the stingray and the tail will whip up, hit them with the barb, be a little puncture on the side of their foot or top of the foot, yeah. and we'll usually wrap it up a little bit, control the bleeding. Usually they bleed a lot and they'll hurt, but if you get, we put it in hot water as soon as you can and usually the pain will subside by an hour. Yeah. And after that, we want to keep it real clean, so make sure you disinfect it well so it doesn't create an infection. Yeah. Is it when is there actually like many times that the barb actually stays in the foot or very very rarely. I've never seen it happen. Okay. I've done hundreds of them. It's very rare, maybe one in a thousand, I would guess. Okay. But it's very rare that the barb will ever stay in get broken off in, in someone's foot. And how often does it happen? Are there certain times a year that you see um, that there are more stingrays in the in the cove area or even up yeah. and down the coast? During the summer, especially when the weather's warm, water's warm, and there's very small surf, that's when we get the most, most stingray wounds. And um, yeah, during the summer especially, especially in the conditions where it's small and, and very warm out. Okay best option is hot water okay. if you're not around and it's and the sand is hot you can cover your feet up with sand okay. cover that up and it will it'll do the same thing as hot water yeah. but hot water is just more comfortable and it works better okay do you, you know what actually is it like submitting a poison or a venom into yeah, you or there's, so there's a toxin that it injects or like not really injects but the the barb is covered in in a toxin and it just kind of slices. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really inject like a bee or anything like that. It's just basically a dirty slime that it has on the barb. Yeah. And it will it will constrict your blood vessels around that where it happens. And if you don't put it in hot water or, or hot compress right away, usually if nothing's done, it's not gonna be very life threatening or anything like that, but it will just the pain will continue okay. for a longer period of time. All right, so this is their hot water faucet. That they use, and what's the temperature here? It's very, very hot. I don't know how hot it is, but it's very hot. We usually fill it up pretty high, and then we have to cool it down a little bit because it's it's too hot for someone to handle just out of the hot water. You can see it starts to smoke yep. and steam. Awesome, so a couple of buckets with hot water for as long mm -hmm. as you can stand it. Yeah, and it's way too hot to, to go right away, so we put some cooler water in there yep. to even it out. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Miles. Yep, no problem. Okay. Kirk was relieved to get his foot in that hot water. When I got home, I looked up stingrays, and I was interested to see that the barb is actually halfway up the tail. I also learned that stingrays are fish, and they're closely related to sharks, that their venom has actually been used as an antiseptic for medicine, and the largest stingray weighs nearly 800 pounds. So it's time for us to head home. If you remember, we were going to take a little deeper look into the difference on how objects react in salt water and fresh water. 
To begin though, let's look at what happens when fresh and salt water come together, like where a river meets an ocean. So here on the right, we have salt water, and on the left, we have fresh water. Let's see. Whoa, the salt water definitely is heavier or more dense than the fresh water. We can see that it sinks down to the bottom here. Seems that salt water makes the water heavier, but it also makes me more buoyant. So let's do some experiments at home. I hope that you pause this video from time to time to experiment. Here's our experiment for today. Get some regular tap water and find some cups. Get one cup of tap water and put it into each cup. All right, so the same. Then find some eggs, maybe some grapes, strawberries, blueberries, um, anything that you have multiple of that are the same size. And we're gonna compare fresh water versus salt water. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna have this be my fresh water and I'm gonna add salt to this one. All right, so we have your one cup just tap water, regular tap water, like fresh water in a lake. And we have our cup that we're gonna add, two tablespoons of table salt. We mix it up really well so it dissolves. Okay, you might have to stir it for a while. It takes a little bit for all those crystals to dissolve. Looks really cloudy, doesn't it? All right, then you're gonna take either eggs and carefully place them in there, or grapes, or blueberries, or strawberries, or whatever you're gonna be experimenting with, and see if they react differently in each of these two solutions. Okay, my superstars, we have three empty cups. We're gonna add one cup of regular tap water to each of them. all about the same okay this one we're gonna leave plain just regular fresh water like fresh water in a lake the middle one is gonna be our mystery um, challenge and the one all the way to your left I'm gonna add two tablespoons of salt Okay. I'm going to stir it up really well so that all the salt, all those salt crystals dissolve. Now, you probably can make a hypothesis from what we've been learning about with buoyancy that if we were to add an object such as grapes or eggs, or if you have blueberries or strawberries, just make sure they're all relatively the same size. What would happen if we were to place them into these solutions? Let's try it. Place the egg into the fresh water. And into the salt water. My challenge for you, how much salt do we need to add to the middle cup in order for this egg to be suspended or floating in the middle of your cup? Now remember, this one 
has no salt added. This one has two tablespoons added. How much are you going to add to the middle cup to see if you can get your egg to be floating mid cup? All right, go experiment. Challenge number three. Fill up as many cups as you want. I'm doing four. Fill each cup up with one cup of regular tap water. And just like in challenge one and two, I'm going to keep this cup full of regular old plain fresh water out of the tap and my one all the way to the left. I'm going to add two tablespoons of salt. Now, my mystery cups in the middle. Those are for you to pick what you want to try adding to water to see if it changes the buoyancy. Okay, you're going to be using the same materials to put in your cups. Maybe it's eggs grapes, strawberries, blueberries. Um, maybe it's a small plastic toy that you find um, has um, different buoyancy and different um, solutions. But your two or more cups in the middle, you're gonna decide what to put in. Maybe you wanna put in something like cornstarch or baking soda or cinnamon or honey. Look in your kitchen and decide what you want to add. I think I'm going to try honey in one of mine. And I think I'll try, oh, uh, probably baking soda in the other. Add your ingredients and then see how it changes the buoyancy when you add your fruit or egg or whatever it is. All right, have fun exploring. We'll see you next week. So I've had a lot of fun making these labs for you. I'd love to hear what your favorites have been. Kane's Arcade, our fishing trip and ecosystems, our bridge building and hike activity, make a ball, or our salt water buoyancy. Click on the flip grid in your Google STEM folder and leave me a message.